Review copy provided by Capcom. Thank you, Capcom. Blast! Hello, my potion-chugging friends. Arlo here, and today we're reviewing Monster Hunter Rise. My first Monster Hunter experience happened some years ago on my base model 3DS. I played the demo for whichever title was new at the time, I really don't know, and it was an abysmal experience. Nothing was properly explained and the combat was simply horrible. Slow, sluggish, like moving through water. My frantic button mashing simply would not translate into the game. After a few minutes, I gave up and deleted the demo. I said, this is stupid. Why would anyone play this game? I just don't get it. I mean, I could sort of understand the appeal of hunting monsters and crafting and all that stuff, but what's the point if it controls like garbage? So I put the experience behind me and didn't look back for years. And then, one day, I picked up Dark Souls. I had the same reaction to the controls, but I was intrigued enough by the world that I pushed through. And then, I got it. It clicked. Combat like this is slow entirely by design. It's more strategic. There's much greater emphasis on exact execution and timing. Your attacks have long recoveries, forcing you to choose each one carefully. This style can be quite challenging, but in the end, it also feels extremely rewarding. Well, after that, I found myself taking little peeks back over at Monster Hunter. Now that I understood the gameplay, the whole package was looking a lot more appetizing. World was a massive success, and watching so many people enjoy it made me seriously consider giving the series another shot. And once Rise came along on Switch, I could resist no longer. So now it's finally time to answer the question. Can the long-running series finally hunt down this monster? Or did Rise have me saying, why, Vern? Vern, Vern is the guy at Best Buy who uh, sells me my games. Like, why, Vern? I'm so sorry. I'm so... I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's so bad. I'm so sorry. Oh. Whoosh. Mallow! 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 If Monster Hunter Rise has one big problem, it's that first getting into it is a little tough for a newcomer. There are a tremendous number of systems to take advantage of and menus to dig through and stats to tweak. That in itself is fine, but the issue is that it doesn't do a very good job of teaching new players. It does indeed try to explain everything, but it does this by constantly blasting you with tutorial pop-ups. Sometimes these don't give you all the info you need, and even when they do, they rarely come at a time when you're actually open to receiving the information. Without proper context, it's all just gobbledygook. This thing lets you do this other thing. Okay, but what's that other thing? Do this, then this, then this. Okay, but why again? This menu lets you craft weapons. Okay, but what does all of this information on the screen mean? Normally, this would be enough to completely scare me away from a game. And indeed, the size and depth of the series has always intimidated me. But Rise has got two things going for it that saved the experience for me, and undoubtedly will for many others as well. One, even if there's a lot to figure out, all it takes is a real flesh and blood person to give you like a 10 minute rundown and you'll be good to go. You just need the really crucial little bits and some proper context to start playing. And two, once you have those basics down, it's easy to enjoy the game for a very long time. I will admit, I'm already creeping my way up to 100 hours of playtime, and there's still a couple things I'm unclear on. Items I don't know how to use, systems I don't understand, bits of menu info I can't decipher, little odds and ends that just go over my head. But that doesn't seem to matter much at all. I'm still working my way through the game. I'm still having a ton of fun. Monster Hunter doesn't require that you learn every little thing, but all that extra stuff is there whenever you want to deepen your experience. That's a relief, because in case you couldn't tell already, I'm not exactly the most skilled video game player in town. And yet, I'm killing monsters left and right. I'm thriving. I've reached rank seven, and I still haven't gotten to that point where the monsters are super scary and I have a hard time, and maybe I even give up. I've been waiting and waiting for that point to come, but it just hasn't. 
So far, the difficulty curve has been super gradual, which is just perfect for a newcomer like me. Rise undoubtedly caters to people looking for a great challenge, or at least it will when it gets updated with higher ranks, but it also makes sure that players of all skill levels can get into it. And another way it works for players of all kinds is by offering a great number of different weapons to choose from. There are 14 weapon types in total, and unlike weapons in most other games, these are all completely distinct. They all function and control differently. The abilities and the combos and even how they make you move, they all do things their own way. This means that not only can a new player experiment until they find a playstyle they enjoy, but a more experienced player looking to keep things fresh can pick up a new weapon and feel like they're playing a different game. I've spent most of my playtime so far with the hammer because it's nice and simple and I can charge up, give a monster the old wham spagunk, then get out of there. But I actually just started using the insect glaive and it's like a whole Whole new world is opened up to me. The game is fresh and fun all over again, and who knows how many times I'll end up playing with different weapons down the line. The sky's the limit, literally, with this thing. Look at how you flip around everywhere. Ah, oh, it's so cool. Game review cliche incoming, the weapons themselves wouldn't be worth much without something to fight, however, and the titular monsters in Rise fit the bill nicely. These things are incredible. I've been enjoying the exquisite creature designs in Resident Evil games for many years now, and it's great to see Capcom's design skill in full force here. These things look phenomenal. They always incorporate multiple animals and elements and concepts, and it's fun to do a quick little analysis of each one you come across. And they're animated so fluidly with so much attention to detail. They're some of the closest things to living, breathing creatures I've seen in a game. Their behavior changes throughout the course of a fight. When they get weaker, they'll grow sluggish. They'll botch their attacks. They'll have to take breaks to catch their breath. But then when they're on the brink of death, they'll get a burst of adrenaline and become more dangerous than ever. They have no health bars, so it's up to you to judge where their HP is at based on their body language and visible damage, which just does so much for the immersion factor. And of course, they're an absolute blast to bring down. I haven't played a Monster Hunter game before, but I can tell that the combat is extremely refined. As I talked about earlier, it takes some getting used to, but it's very rewarding. The visual and audio feedback you get when you land a hit is just Mwah! Oh, it's incredible! Especially when you mix the wire bug into your strategy, which lets you do all these crazy spins and stuff. There's a ton of risk and reward involved, and nailing a long combo or getting right in a monster's face as it's readying an attack and stunning it with a good smack is a thing of beauty. Also, the satisfaction that comes from getting a monster's attack patterns down and taking it out is immense, especially if it's a battle that's been giving you a hard time. The fights can be decently long, which does make it frustrating to fail a quest, but it's all the more sweet when you deliver that final blow and reap the rewards. One thing I'm not a big fan of, though, is the weapon sharpening system. The duller your weapon gets, the less damage it does, so you've got to take a few moments with the old whetstone to fix it up. There are multiple damage tiers, and you can absolutely still fight with a weapon that's not perfectly sharp, but I never want to have my damage limited, not even a little, so I feel compelled to keep it topped up at all times. And weapons dull very quickly, so constantly having to whip out the whetstone does hurt the pacing a little. Monsters frequently run away, and you can sharpen while riding your palamute, so it's not a deal breaker or anything, but it is slightly annoying. And people tell me it's less annoying now than it used to be, so <laughs> I don't even want to imagine what it was like before. It doesn't really seem like a necessary mechanic, if you ask me. Back to those rewards I mentioned though. Reaping rewards is the name of the game. Fight monsters, take their parts, use those parts to make yourself stronger so you can fight stronger monsters, repeat. That is the core gameplay loop in Monster Hunter and the entirety of the experience hinges on that loop. And what a loop it is, my friends. Multiplayer games are all about loot these days, and I can certainly see why. It's awesome to feel like you're really earning all of your improvements. And of course, there's the silly satisfaction that comes from getting a rare drop. In addition to monster parts, the world is filled with all sorts of other stuff to collect. I love collecting stuff in games because I feel like I'm always making little bits of progress wherever I go, even if I know I'll probably only use a fraction of the stuff I pick up. 
While there are a ton of pickups in this game, between plants and ore and mushrooms and bones and bugs and other animals and all sorts of stuff, and you can use a lot of it to craft useful items like bombs, ammo, traps, potions, and the like. There's also a lot of endemic life that will give you temporary stat boosts or otherwise help you in battle, which just adds that much more stuff to collect as you're running around. It's kind of like Breath of the Wild, except you can actually use some of it. Constantly picking up items and boosts makes even the simple act of getting from point A to point B satisfying. Speaking of which, it's especially fun to collect stuff because the world itself is so much fun to traverse. You can ride your Palamute, which cuts down on travel time dramatically and is also just a bunch of fun. It can even run up vine walls, so getting around is slick and easy. And on top of that, you've got your wire bug, and it is legitimately hard to believe that this thing just didn't exist before Rise. I honestly can't imagine the game without it. You can get up walls super fast, you can cover huge distances in moments, you can supplement all your climbing and jumping to make sure you always get exactly where you want to go. It's incredibly fun and empowering, and the overall experience is already paced slowly enough that I'm not sure if I'd have the patience to traverse the world without it. And on top of traversal, the wirebug also enables the wyvern riding mechanic. If you do enough damage with wirebug attacks, you can hop on a monster's back and control it for a bit. When you and the monster are alone, it's a little disappointing because all you can do to damage it is run it into walls a couple times, and it doesn't even do that much. When other monsters stumble upon the fight, though, it's much more interesting. It's really fun watching these huge creatures duke it out, and sometimes when they get into a straight-up turf war, they've got unique animations that look really incredible. But even their ramming attacks make them rideable, so you can chain together your rides and wreak some havoc. It does still feel like this doesn't do as much damage as it should, and the monsters are really hard to control, with these turning radiuses so wide sometimes you can't even aim at the stupid things, and sometimes you'll build up your meter and unleash a mounted punisher and it will just kind of miss, or, or do like no damage, I might be missing something here, but it's still a fun and flashy mechanic that adds to the sense of empowerment. So it's a ton of fun running around these locales, fighting monsters and collecting stuff, Though I will say, I was disappointed to find that this is not an open world experience. Your base of operations is Kimura Village, and from there you go on quests to the game's handful of individual areas. I do absolutely understand why this is the way it is. The separate environments allow for more variety because they don't need to transition naturally into each other. Snow here, swamp here, lava here, you get the picture. They also lend to the game's somewhat rigid quest structure, and that structure is exactly what makes it so replayable. It can basically arrange monsters in any way it wants and tell you to kill any number of them or collect any number of whatever. Then the time limit on each quest makes it more suited for multiplayer and also prevents you from playing things too safe and relying on chip damage. I absolutely get it, and I can't even say the game is necessarily worse for it. But I find it personally disappointing, just because it sacrifices a lot of the immersion factor. There's already not a lot to find in these levels beyond materials and stuff, so exploring isn't quite as fun as it could be. And having everything all sectioned off without any seamless travel makes it feel way more gamey. The monsters can sometimes start off in specific places, but for the most part, they just cruise around the map randomly. In games like this, I love the thrill of stumbling into a strong monster, or entering its lair and feeling like I'm doing something dangerous and exciting. But in this case, it really does just feel like some enemies populating a map based on whatever the quest calls for at the time. I can't help but imagine how fun it would be to hunt these awesome monsters in their unique habitats. You've got to climb this big mountain to fight Rathalos. You've got to find the Nargakuga in this spooky jungle. Oh man, I ran into a Jurotodus in the swamp. But, oh well. Like I said, this structure fits the game's formula, so I get it. Kimura Village is where you'll spend all your time when you're not getting your hands dirty on the field, and this is where a newcomer is going to feel the most overwhelmed. You would think that fighting a fire-breathing dragon would be scary, but despite all the flower petals and smiling faces and <laughs> cutesy cat people, no foe feels more menacing than this village. So many quests to take on, so many services to utilize, so many people to talk to, so many different little odds and ends you can earn and customize and equip to your character. There's a whole buddy system where you can hire your little cat and dog friends, you can give them different gear and abilities, you can send them out on expeditions to gather materials, there's a training ground, there's an arena where you can take on unique fights, you can get food before each hunt, it's a very dense place. 
And like I said, I still don't understand all of it. It's definitely frustrating being so confused for so long. However, I must admit, there is something a little fun about figuring it all out over time. It's silly, but realizing how to use one of these town services feels a little like being granted a new ability. The rest of the game is forgiving enough that I don't feel like I'm missing out much when I don't use a feature, but then when I do, I feel like I've earned that extra little boost. Kind of funny. The quests in Monster Hunter Rise are very, very basic. They're given by people in town, and even though they tell you about rescues and escorts and all that stuff, you'll never see any people on the field or run into any unique scenarios. Every quest really just is, go kill this, go collect that, go slay these, go find those. It's another thing that fits the structure of the game fine, but it does feel a little cheap sometimes. It would be nice to have at least a few little surprises thrown in there. The game does indeed have a story that plays out as you work your way through quests, though it ain't worth much. It feels like one of those games where they make so many of them and people are really just there for the gameplay, so the story doesn't really matter. And I get that. But a tiny bit more effort in this department would have been appreciated. It's all stitched together through some dialogue and a handful of cutscenes and it never really does anything super interesting to grab your attention. The characters are completely asinine. It's all the same tropey anime stuff I've seen 6,000 times by now. And I know most people love the whole feudal Japan thing, but I am not a fan. I actually considered playing Monster Hunter World instead simply because all the kimonos and cherry blossoms are just not my thing. I've seen it too many times. It's too predictable. <laughs> also, hey, the rampage is coming. We're all gonna die. This giant beast that nearly destroyed us 50 years ago is back to finish the job. You've been a hunter for, what, 10 hours? Great, go get it. You're the only one who can save us. Certainly not any of these seasoned hunters all over town or this army of cat and dog warriors. Nope, just you. My friend and I were actually joking that the whole jovial community thing is a front, and everyone in town secretly hates you and wants to get you killed. That was a perfect hunt! Mew really aren't kitten around with that hammer! And then you turn, and the smile <laughs> drops out their face, and they glare at you as you walk away. It's pretty much our headcanon at this point. Anyway, that's quite the aside. Lastly, on top of the generic feel, the story is pretty short. It's basically split between village quests and hub quests. And if you focus on village quests, you'll beat one of the big bads and roll the credits super fast. It's extremely anticlimactic. The hub quests are a bit better. Some stuff at the end does get pretty cool, and the last boss is terrific. So there are some decent chunks in there to enjoy, and it can technically take a lot of hours to reach that point but very few of those hours are actually story related and overall the experience is not worth much. Perfunctory is a good word for it, I think. Just something basic to staple everything together. Though one positive I've got in this department is the game's overall vibe. I might not like the characters and the story, but I do like how silly and lighthearted everything is. It makes the generic story much easier to swallow, and I think it makes the world easier to spend long stretches in. There are no dark themes or brooding villains or gritty cutscenes here. This is a cartoon world. <laughs> These are cartoon people. There seems to be very little threat to anyone's life because no matter what happens, a person will always be magically carted back to town if they get hurt. It makes the monsters feel less dangerous, which you'd think would be a bad thing. And yet it gives the game a very empowering, encouraging feel. Take it on again whenever you're ready. You're an awesome hunter. You can do anything. Eat some marshmallow stuff. That'll get you going. It's just a fun fantasy to get pulled into. I mean, you literally eat candy for every meal. I think this might actually be one of those meta things where it's all really just a kid playing with their toys or something. Back to those quests I keep circling around though. Village quests are easier and only playable solo, and hub quests are a bit harder and are available to play multiplayer. But fortunately, playing them alone is perfectly fine, which is awesome. I can't stand when half a game is locked behind co-op. The progression is pretty basic. The more you complete, the higher your rank gets. The higher your rank, the more you can do. And higher rank missions give you better monster drops, allowing you to craft better weapons and armor. And perhaps as with any game heavily reliant on loot, there is some grinding involved. Different monster parts have different chances of dropping, so it's very possible to go through a 15 minute fight and walk away with nothing you need. This is another one of those things that would normally scare me away. 
But one, as with everything else, you can do as little or as much of it as you want, and you'll still have fun with whatever gear you use. Two, maybe this will change at the highest ranks, but so far the most I've ever had to grind a monster was like four times. Three, this is one of those games you can either marathon or pick up and play for a few minutes at a time. It's just so much fun fighting monsters that grinding doesn't seem like too much of a chore at all, and the satisfaction of crafting that thing you wanted is massive. Again, you don't have to partake take if that's not your thing, but the option is there for people who want to dig deeper. Every way you look at it, the game is great at providing an experience that works for everyone. And another thing I'm glad the game doesn't force on me much is Rampage missions. The basic plot of the game is that monsters are going all crazy and heading for Kimura, and you've got to find a way to divert them. Sometimes that means doing this little side activity that's basically the Monster Hunter equivalent of a tower defense game. Here you build different kinds of weapons and use them to fight off the horde. It's a really cool concept, and I can certainly see plenty of people enjoying these missions, but they're not my cup of tea. They're a little hard for me to follow, and they're super stressful, and I'm just not a fan. Fortunately, the game very rarely forces these on you in order to progress the story, so that's nice. <laughs> Though, they do give you some really great rewards, so I guess not doing them is a bit of a trade-off. Now taking Rampage pros who want to volunteer to do them with me so I can get the loot and tickets without doing the work. And speaking of playing with other people, as you might know, I'm not really big on multiplayer. I don't often have the time to play with other people, and when progressing through a game, I generally like to accomplish everything myself. The rare times I do get into multiplayer, though, it's 100% co-op. For a while, it was Salmon Run. For a while, it was Resident Evil Raid Mode. And now, it's Monster Hunter Rise. I still like progressing through the story on my own, but hopping on and helping my buddies with their own quests is my new favorite thing in the entire world. Shout out to Brian, the official Arlo merchandise specialist at multiple events, and Nolan, who has a great Twitch channel you should go check out. We have been having an absolute blast playing this game, and that is thanks in no small part to the fact that the online is awesome! Monster Hunter Rises Online puts most other multiplayer Nintendo games to shame. I mean, what can I really say about it other than it works? Tiny hitches and jitters in character movement here and there, occasional brief slowdown, that's been the extent of my issues so far absolutely nothing to negatively impact the experience. Connecting is quick and simple, you can drop in and out of quests at the drop of a hat, everybody shares victories and loot so there's no competition. If you're having trouble with a fight, you can send out a request for randos to join you. Or if you feel like helping someone out yourself, or just having a good time with some other monster hunting folks, you can accept someone else's request. You can even set filters so people know exactly what kinds of quests you're looking to go on. And then there's the cherry on top, System Link. Oh, System Link is a thing of beauty. Basically, it doesn't matter who you are or how you want to play. All the options are here for you. And real quick, can I just give a shout out to the Monster Hunter community? I know there are awesome, helpful people in every community, and my unpleasant experiences with some specific games and series do not represent the greater whole and all that. But my gosh, every single interaction I've had with the Monster Hunter fandom has been 100% awesome. Everyone is super helpful, super happy to give info, or even offer to hop on a quest, quick to admit that the series they love does indeed have flaws, and not a single get gooder among them. You are all terrific, and you've made getting into Monster Hunter so much easier than I expected. Back on the subject of performance, though, I am extremely pleased to say that it's not just the online that works weirdly well. The whole game performs above my expectations. Same as before, the occasional slowdown, but mostly stable frame rate. Oh my gosh, and the loading times? They are weirdly fast, suspiciously fast. Like they put all these little tips on the loading screen so you've got something to read while it loads, but you've only got time to skim through like one what kind of voodoo magic were they using when they made this game? Then for visuals, resolution isn't super high according to reports, but the level of detail on display makes it harder to tell. All told, the game looks phenomenal. It was clearly built with the Switch in mind, and as such, it doesn't feel like one of those AAA ports that has to make a bunch of sacrifices. It's all incredibly slick and makes the absolute most out of the Switch hardware. I mean, if there's anything else I've learned about Capcom over the years, it's that they know how to make a polished game, even on underpowered Nintendo systems. 
Despite my theming gripes, the world is a joy to behold. Kimura is so richly detailed, with an immense amount of fun visual information to take in, and the character animations are top-notch, especially in these little NPC interactions. There aren't a lot of locales to explore, but each one is interesting, and sometimes even gorgeous. The surrounding landscapes give an incredible sense of scope. Complementing the visuals, naturally, is the sound design. Sound in Monster Hunter Rise is also top-notch, though once again I would expect no less from Capcom. The combat sounds are especially satisfying and really enhance the gameplay, as I mentioned earlier. The music, though... Yeah, I'm pretty indifferent. And while the fight music is some decent orchestral kind of stuff, there's not a lot of variety. It's not a huge problem though, as this is already a perfect game for muting the music and listening to your own while you grind. You've probably heard the term, wide as an ocean, deep as a puddle. Well, Monster Hunter Rise is the opposite. It's wide as a puddle and deep as an ocean. And it might sound like that's a bad thing, but in my eyes, it's absolutely not. In fact, as someone who's really interested in the business of game development, I can't help but appreciate how economical this game's format is and how perfectly it caters to its exact fan base. I know there are some pretty meaty content updates coming, but at the time of this recording, the game is very small. It's just five areas, each populated with small creatures and stuff to collect, and a series of quests that draw in any combinations of monsters they want. The majority of the monsters aren't even new to this game, and though things have obviously been tweaked a lot, it feels like a ton of it has been carried over from past games. They built the framework, and the game's content is just endlessly reusing what they built. For the most part, it really does just boil down to drop in a quest, fight a thing, take your loot back to the village, craft if you can, repeat. It's incredibly simple, and beyond rampage missions, it never changes. And yet, within that relatively small scope, the game is exceptional deep. There are so many weapon types to choose from, so many individual weapons to craft of each type, so much armor and other accessories, so many skills to experiment with and take advantage of, so many different ways to augment and customize the experience to your liking. And the feedback loop is so strong because the gameplay is just so fun and the whole package has been given such an exceptional polish that it's a joy to take in at all times. I mean, they should teach classes on this game. Capcom took a relatively small experience and made it feel massive. They made it endlessly replayable, or at least it will be once the DLC starts rolling in, but I've already put in more time than I put into most games, and I still haven't done everything there is to do. Lots of quests to finish, a whole new weapon to learn, and friends to help rank up. So in case you couldn't tell, I just happen to think that Monster Hunter Rise is an incredible game. It's fun, it's deep, it's beautiful, and it provides a dramatic amount of bang for your buck if you get sucked up into its loop. I was skeptical of the idea of getting into this series. I was intimidated by all the stuff to learn and the technical combat and the overall feeling that Monster Hunter was just a thing that had grown too big for me to even consider. And I know that it's absolutely not a game for everyone, but if you play the demo and have a hard time like I did, but you still find something enticing about the experience, I heartily recommend you stick with it, get some help, and see what happens. Because from what I hear, this is the best time to start. Even as a newcomer, I got the same impression here that I got from Fire Emblem Three Houses. The feeling that I'm playing a series that's been refined and refined over the course of many years. And against all odds, I am now a Monster Hunter fan. Arlo is a Monster Hunter fan. I am head over heels in love with this game, and all I want in the entire world is for evening to come so I can get in a couple more hours with my buds. What up, Hunter boys? I'll see you tonight. We're gonna get that scary monkey. <laughs> Well, there you have it. Are you crazy about Monster Hunter yourself? Did Rise win you over as it did with me? Whatever the case, let me know down in the comments. And in the meantime, I'm recording this outro after I recorded the main body of the video, and Capcom has now unlocked the level cap. So if you need me, I'll be grinding to Hunter rank 999. See you next year. Wait, hold on. Before the game came out, Capcom sent me a box of stuff, and I did an unboxing video, and this is my awkward transition into that part of the video. Thank you, here you go. Hello there, my friends. I have just received a mystery package from Capcom. I have a slight suspicion about what, what game this uh, pertains to, but I'm not sure. So let's open it up. 
I already did the tape part, so we just gotta rip it open there. Just gotta open it right up. Come on. Uh, oh, there's something in here. It's some kind of, oh, it's a monster hunter thing. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, 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 this is what I was hoping for. Oh, look at that. Look at that, it's even the fancy one. Oh, you've heard me talk about how I thought this thing was really cool. It is really cool. The good old Magne Magnamalo, Magnamalo. <laughs> it's a great guy. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, it's so cool. There's more stuff. There's more stuff. Oh, oh, looky. <laughs> look at these stickers. Are these stickers? Oh, look at this. What else we got? Oh, cool. I don't know the significance of that, that little emblem but I'm sure it's some sort of cool Monster Hunter Rise related thing. Okay, I gotta check out some of these stickers. Look at these, look at these. Oh, cool, oh, cool, oh, cool. Oh my gosh, there's a ton of them. Whoa, there's so many. Look at all these. Got that one, you got that one. Wow, wow, we see how we, look at all these stickers. But if we're honest though, look at this. Look, I mean, this is all cool, but oh, I love that. I love that so much, it's so cool. I'm not even familiar with the game yet, but I like that. I know what I like is what I see. Well, thank you so much, Capcom. That was super duper awesome of you, and I'm going to go put this on my desk 